Hey, I'm Gautam and welcome back to the Beginner's Guide to DC Tool Development, where today we're finally taking a look at Color Space Aware tools. And more specifically, we'll be creating an exposure tool, which will allow you to change the exposure of the image in stops, and it will work in the DaVinci Ycamet Intermediate Color Space. What this entails, more specifically, is finding the DaVinci Ycamet Intermediate white paper, finding the correct formulas for the transfer functions, well, transfer functions you may know as the gamma of a color space, but well, gamma is only a specific type of transfer function for displays where cameras and intermediate spaces have different kind of transfer functions called EOTFs and OETFs, which uh, is a whole other topic within itself. But without further ado, let's get started with the white paper. So if you Google for DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate PDF or white paper, you should find this PDF, which I have also included a link to in the description below. This is a document which details how to get from and to this color space. Similar documents exist for all different color spaces and they detail three different things. First off, they detail the primaries, which are the red, green and blue corners of the gamut and the white point. Then they have a 3x3 matrix to go from the color space into XYZ and the reverse of going from XYZ into the color space. And finally, what we're really interested in, the optoelectrical transfer function or OETF. This is the maths formula that controls the luminance or the tone curve of the color space. For example, if we talk about recording in log, we're really talking about a specific logarithmic formula which the camera runs its signal through before recording it. So here we have the forward OETF and the inverse OETF. As it is said here, for linear light value L, which we can see in both formulas, and encoded value V, also seen in the formulas, and given the above parameters, which are just a set of numbers that we'll have to copy over. DaVinci Intermediate is encoded and decoded using the following equations. If we're getting confused by the naming of OETF and another very similar name EOTF, then essentially O stands for optical and E stands for electrical. Optical always refers to linear light and electrical refers to an encoded signal. So if we're going from optical to electrical or an optoelectrical transfer function, then we are going from linear light into an encoded signal, in this case, a logarithmic signal. So to continue, find the boilerplate I provided in the first episode. I'll also have the link in this video's description. And let's create a few functions. So as always, every function needs the device key name, device referring to the graphics card of the computer, then for this initial function, we'll only process one color channel at a time, so we'll input and output floats, and let's name it DI, or DaVinci Intermediate, to linear. Add the parameter of in and some curly brackets. Now we can head back to the PDF and copy over the correct function. In this case, as we're going from DaVinci Intermediate into linear, we want to take the inverse OETF. So let's just select all of this and copy and paste it in here. So right away, we have a few problems. First off, we don't have all of these custom variables, but we can copy them over as well and place them inside the function. And of course, we'll have to format it correctly where each of these equals the assigned value, and also we should not forget to add Fs or floats at the end of every one of these numbers. And finally, we need to specify that these are indeed floats. Then secondly, we named our input in instead of V. So using Control or Command D, we can quickly select all of the currencies of V and replace it with in. Then we can take all occurrences of L in the final formulas 
except we don't want to select di log. So when you start using control or command D, some options appear in the top right corner where we can select to only match whole words. And thus, if we do control D, it only selects the whole words, or in this case, a single letter. And let's name these out. We still haven't defined the out variable, so we can define that here. And as a good convention, I'll just set it to in, but we don't necessarily need that. We have a pow function or a power function, which doesn't exist in DC tools in this form. So we'll have to go into the readme file, find this long list of all the different floating point math functions that are available to us and find the underscore pow f function. We can copy that and replace it here. It seems that the syntax is exactly the same where it has float x and float y, computes x raised to the power of y and it seems that inside of these braces we also have two variables and they should be in the correct order. Then the 2.0 is a float and then we have this interesting do this. If in is bigger than di log cut and do all of this if in is smaller or equal to di log cut. Essentially we have an if statement at hand and we can turn it into one. So let's do if, take this, if in is larger than di log cut, we can perform this. And because these two are the opposites, instead of doing another if statement, we can simply do else, where if this conditional isn't met, just run code in here and we can copy this. Finally, add some semicolons, and in theory, this function should work. Now, to test it out, we can go down below and set our color channels one by one to be put through this function. And if I hit save and go into DaVinci Resolve and hit reload, Aha! Something is happening to the image, which is a good sign. Now to make sure it's working correctly, we should do the inverse right after this DCTL. And for this, we can just use a color space transform going back from linear into DaVinci Intermediate. And what can we see? The combination of these two does not get us back to where we started. So something seems to be wrong. The code is running, but it's not doing quite what we'd like it to. And well, what did I forget to do? I forgot to return anything. So let's do return out. And now if we go back and reload the DC till and select these two, aha, there's still some kind of a difference. Well, the color space transform is applying tone mapping. But if we disable that, select the two nodes, and as we can see, the end result is nothing, meaning that we have coded the first side of the transfer function correctly. Now we'll delete this, and we can crack on with implementing the second side. For this, I'll copy this function because there's a lot of code we can reuse. I'll rename it to linear 2 di and we can see what we have in the white paper. So this time we'll be using the forward OETF. Again, let's copy all of this and bring it in here. Again, we have some conditionals. We can copy these over to our existing if statements. So again, we only need the first one. And let's get rid of these for clarity. Then we have a log2 function, which again we'll need to find the equivalent to, which is underscore log2 float, and put it in here. We'll need to replace the in and out variables with out 
and the invariable, which will be L, as in linear in this case. And we can finally copy these two functions inside of the if statements. And to test it out again, what we can do is just do half of it, because if both halves worked, then we wouldn't see a difference, in which case we didn't know if the DC cell didn't work at all, or if it worked perfectly. So let's again test half of it. Going from linear to DaVinci Intermediate, hit reload, and well, it is not doing anything. So we can expect that it has thrown an error. Let's head over to the Resolve Debug. And what do we have? DI link hot was declared, that's a warning, but error, identifier L is undefined. So where do we have this L? There we go, in if statement. Hopefully some of you already caught this and replace it with in. Hit save, and now it does something. So let's add a node before it with a color space transform going from DaVinci Intermediate into Linear, not doing any tone mapping. And in theory, once again, nothing is happening, which is what we want. Perfect. So now we have successfully implemented both sides of the transfer function for DaVinci Intermediate. And we can start working on the exposure part of the tool. So the reason for having to implement these transfer functions is that the way stops work, which, if you don't know, plus one stop is doubling of light and minus one stop is halving of light, well, that's the case if you have linear light, meaning how light is in the real world. Now, if we have it encoded, either in DaVinci Intermediate or, for example, RE log C or another log function, then that halving and doubling of light no longer works. So to use this principle, we need to first get our signal into linear. So let's do di to linear and linear to di and between the two, we can implement exposure. So as I said, exposure is multiplying the input. And now if plus one stop is doubling, and minus one stop is halving of light, then it just so happens that if we use the power f function that we already saw in the transfer function, it gives us exactly that behavior. So we can do power two to the power of an exposure variable, which, well, we haven't actually implemented yet. So let's head over to the readme file, find where we have the float slider variable and add that into our DC till. Give it a variable name, a label, a default value of zero, because we don't want it to change the image out of the box, a minimum value of, for example, minus 10 stops, maximum of plus 10 stops, and as was the case before, the step doesn't really matter today, but if they should fix it at some point, I want to have it be quite precise. And if we hit save and head over to DaVinci Resolve, reload, and does it work? Yes, it does. At least it does something, but to make sure it does it correctly, we can compare it to something known, which is the HDR panel's global wheel exposure. Let's create another node. In here, add, for example, two stops. Save this into our gallery. Now we can delete this node, look at what this still looks like and set it so the wipe covers the whole image. And now we can try doing the same in our DC till, so doing two stops and we can enable the still and wipe over it and we can see nothing changes, which is what we want, where if I disabled the DC till, we would see a wipe. If we enable it, we can't see a wipe because both the DC cell and the HDR panel's exposure are doing exactly the same thing. That's perfect. So as a last quick thing, we can turn these two triplets 
into their own functions as we did with lift, gamma and gain. So a device float free linear to, sorry first off, di to linear f3 taking in a float free and then let's do the same thing but in reverse where it's linear to di and then both functions will just reference the already existing functions where let's do a float free out equals in out dot x equals di to linear copy this two times and then return the out and we can copy paste all of this code in here and just do the reverse. And finally, we can replace these functions with the float free versions and our code will be a bit cleaner. Hit save, head over to Dimitri Resolve and if all has gone well, Oh no, all has not gone well. Where's our error? Let's head over to the result debug. Identifier output is undefined. Let's do control F. Where do we have something called output? There we go. Instead of output, it should be out. Hit save, back into resolve, reload, and it works beautifully. Well, there you have it. You have graded your very first color space aware grading tool and Again, yes, it's a tool that you can find inside of Resolve, but it's a very important first step in creating more complex grading tools. And as you have now implemented your first transfer function, you can start finding other white papers from other manufacturers and start implementing more and more transfer functions. And soon enough, you might find what I have, a long list of ready-made functions that you can just copy paste into other DC tools for use. Hope you enjoyed this one and see you next time.